This video introduces the law of sines. First we'll start off by reviewing solving a right triangle, then we'll talk about what an oblique triangle is, and then we'll introduce the law of sines. First of all, we know about right triangles. We know this is a right triangle because we have a square in the corner. That square means it's a right triangle. And we know how to solve for a missing side using, let's see, I think it was the Pythagorean theorem, which is a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. In this case, we have the legs a and b, and we're trying to solve c. Now, we could have given one leg and the hypotenuse, and you'd solve for the missing leg, but this example will stick with two legs and the hypotenuse is the unknown. All we would do is plug in 1 and 2 into our equation and have 1 squared plus 2 squared equals c squared. And going ahead and solving for this, we would find the length of the hypotenuse is square root of 5. Again, this should all be review. When I say to solve a triangle, it means give me all three sides and all three angles. Well, we don't have to worry about one of the angles, that's 90 degrees, because this is a right triangle. But say I'm trying to find this angle first. How am I going to do that? Well, I'm going to have to put away my Pythagorean theorem and instead use my trigonometry tools. Now, I've calculated square root of 5. The problem gave me sides 1 and 2. And I'm going to pick a trig function that uses the 1 and the 2. Because in case I made a mistake with the square root of 5, I don't want that mistake to propagate through my answers. So if I want a trig function that has to do with the sides 1 and 2, I think that's opposite over adjacent and that would be my tangent. Now instead of the question mark, I replace that with theta. So tangent is equal to opposite over adjacent, or in this case, 1 over 2. So I need to find what angle gives me a tangent of 1 half, or 5 tenths. And to do that, I'm going to use my inverse trig function. I'll say the inverse tangent of 0.5 should give me an angle that would give me a tangent of 0.5. Remember with your calculator, you have to watch your mode when you use your inverse trig functions. If I have it in radian mode, my answer will be given to me in radians. If I have it in degree mode, I'll have my answer in degrees. Right now I want to stick with degrees, so I'm going to make sure my calculator is in degree mode. And when I find the inverse tangent of 0.5, I find that angle is equal to approximately 26.6 degrees and we'll put that in the corner. Finding that missing angle is easy if you remember that the angles of any triangle have to add up to 180 degrees. And since we have one angle of 90 degrees, then we know that the two acute angles in this right triangle are complementary. That is, they add up to 90 degrees. So if I take 90 degrees and subtract 26.6 degrees from it, I get that last angle being 63.4 degrees. And that's how we solve a right triangle. But we have more than right triangles in the world. We have what are called oblique triangles. These are triangles that are not right triangles. We have two different types of oblique triangles. We have an acute triangle, and we have an obtuse triangle. And what I'm going to do to introduce the law of sines will work for both the acute and the obtuse triangle, but I'm going to focus on the acute triangle. So here's our acute triangle. Well, the trouble is I don't know what to do with this. First of all, label my angles. Remember, the angles are capital letters, A, B, and C. And remember, the sides opposite those angles are the same letter, but in lowercase. So the side lowercase A is opposite the angle capital A. The same with B and with C. In trigonometry, we've been using more of the Greek letters, things like alpha, beta, gamma, or sometimes theta. But for this example, we're going to stick with A, B, and C just to make it a little bit clearer. Well, if I don't know what to do with an oblique triangle, I'm going to instead force this into two right triangles. All I did was drop my height from C down to the side C, and now I have two right triangles. And now I've labeled that H for the height of the triangle. Let's look at this triangle first. All right, I'm going to look at this angle A. Now, what can I do with this angle A? Well, I know I have two sides. I have H and I have B. H would be the opposite side, and it looks like B is the hypotenuse of the small triangle. So I could say that sine of that angle A is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, or H over B. All right, let's move to this triangle. Now I'm looking at angle B, and angle B, I can say, is equal to the opposite or the height divided by the hypotenuse, or lowercase a. 
So sine of a is equal to h over b, and sine of b is equal to h over a. I could solve both of these for h. On my left-hand equation, I multiply both sides by b, and on my right-hand equation, I'll multiply both sides by a. And I notice I have two h's. Those h's are the same size, so I can set them equal to each other. And when I do that, I get b times sine of a is equal to a times sine of b. All right, what can I do with this? Well, first, I'm going to get sine of a by itself. And so I'm going to divide both sides by b. That should give me sine of a alone on the left-hand side of the equation, and a times sine of b all over b on the right-hand side of the equation. Well, now that I've done that, let's do the same thing to the a. Let's divide lowercase a, the side of the length a, from both sides of the equation. Then I get sine of a divided by a is equal to sine of b divided by b. And in fact, I can extend this to sine of a divided by a is equal to the sine of b divided by b, which is also equal to the sine of c divided by c. And this is the law of sines. Notice the reciprocal of this is also true. That is, a divided by sine of a is equal to b divided by sine of b is equal to c divided by sine of c. What do we have to watch out for? Well, as I said, although I proved this for an acute angle, the same method works to prove this for an obtuse angle as well. What about dividing by zero? We tend to be very particular about watching when we divide by zero because we're not allowed to do so. Well, it looks to me that a, b, and c, the sides of the triangle, can't be zero because if one of those sides was zero, we wouldn't have a triangle anymore. What about sine a, sine b, and sine c? Well, I know that sine of zero is zero, and the next time that sine is zero is 180 degrees. Well, we're not going to have an angle of zero, and we're not going to have an angle of 180 degrees in our triangle. So I don't have to worry about this. There are no cases for an oblique triangle that would cause me to divide by zero. Finally, what about a, b, and c, those angles? Do I have to worry about this being in degrees or radians? I remember when I did my arc length formula, I had to make sure my angle was in radians. Does it matter here? Well, actually it doesn't. If I give you an angle A in radians, then you just need to make sure your calculator is in the radian mode. If I give you the angle B in degrees, make sure your calculator is in degree mode. But the sign of that angle, whether it's in radian or degrees, as long as your calculator is in the right mode, will give you the same answer for the sine function. So A, B, and C can be given in either radians or degrees. And that's an introduction of the Law of Signs. The next video will go through some examples using the Law of Signs.